Good morning, fourth grade. We are on chapter 17 of the Aurora County All-Stars. Yesterday we left off with Clebo and House are in Norwood Boyd's house very, very late at night or early in the morning. The sun's about to come up. And <laughs> they haven't left yet. Clebo has learned a lot about what House has been up to lately. His big secret has been shared. Um, House's brain is kind of reeling, thinking about Mr. Norwood Boyd and everything that Pip told him. And yeah, let's see what happens. Chapter 17. This chapter begins with a quote by Walt Whitman. I think of few heroic actions which cannot be traced to the artistical impulse. He who does great deeds does them from his innate sensitiveness to moral beauty. All right, here we go. The flashlight made a puddle of light bobbling on the pictures in the hallway. Pips like Jackie Robinson, whispered Clebo after House told him the story. Did he play second base like Jackie? I don't know. I didn't ask him, said House. A mean man, just like Pee Wee Reese. House shook his head. Pee Wee is a shortstop. Mr. Norwood was a catcher. Clebo shook his head. That's not what I'm talking about. 1947 Brooklyn Dodgers, first season, a black man played in the major leagues. There were folks in the stands, even in the dugouts, who screamed at Jackie to go back to Africa, and worse, when he came onto the field to play. They screamed at Jackie Robinson. Jackie Robinson, who made six all-star teams in a row. Jackie Robinson, who was National League MVP in 1949. And nobody has stole more bases than Jackie Robinson. What about Pee Wee? Oh, in the middle of all that screaming, Pee Wee Reese walked across the infield and clapped his white hand on Jackie Robinson's black shoulder. Pee Wee said, this man is my teammate. And everybody got quiet. And then they played ball. House blinked. How do you know that? You know my daddy. I've heard that story around my dinner table for years. Jackie stood tall and Pee Wee stood with him. You don't know that story? House shook his head. I know Sandy Koufax made 382 strikeouts in 1965. That's one less than Nolan Ryan's 383, and he did it when Nolan Ryan was still pitching in high school. Did you know that story? You only told me a million times. Clebo's eyes traveled the wall of photographs. I wish I could have seen Jackie Robinson steal home plate, he said in a faraway voice. He took the flashlight from House and leaned in close to Pip's picture. Who would have guessed Pip played ball? His voice had a new respect in it. And just look at that uniform. Aurora Angels. Yeah, said House. And the Little League. Like the kids in Jones County. Little League, sighed Clebo. You know... We'd have enough boys if we could pull them from all these little crossroads around here. For a moment, both boys gazed at the photograph in silence. Then Clebo shook his head. We just got to play our game on July 4th, House. Can't you figure something out? The mamas have all gone crazy. My mama tells me I'm going to be the next Sydney Poitier. Who the heck is that? It ain't so, House. And none of us boys gonna go to Hollywood. I know, said House. I know. His mind ticked around the problem. I want to play too. I want to play real bad. But I don't know how to go about it. He gave a short whistle for Eudora, who snuffled out of the hallway, her tongue drooping out of her mouth. Let's go, girl. We got to figure out something, said Clebo. As they shut the big front door behind them, House said, Don't tell me I don't approach stuff. Well, you sure got a whopper to tell now, said Clebo. You promised you wouldn't tell. <clears throat> I won't, and you don't tell on me neither. You can count on me, said House. The trio, House, Clebo, and Eudora Welty, walked through the woodsy night to House's house. They walked through the same woods House had come through that morning that Norwood Boyd had died. A hundred years had passed since then. A chickadee called up the sun. It wouldn't be long before dawn. I can't believe Francis is related to Pip, 
said Klebo. Pip's amazing. You didn't think he was amazing before. That's before I knew he was like Jackie Robinson. Pip says Mr. Norwood was amazing. Huh, said Klebo. Overhead, an owl hooted his good night. What's that book? House clutched the treasure closer to himself. Just an old book. Oh yeah? What's it about? Nothing much. Klebo raised an eyebrow. We got practice in the morning, you know. I know. You gotta work on your knuckleball. We gotta sleep. Leonard Jackson's light was off, but the back porch light shone into the morning dew. House had not turned it on when he left. Quietly, the boys and Eudora tiptoed to bed on the sleeping porch. House tucked his note from Mr. Norwood Boyd inside his treasure and put it under his pillow. Klebo slept on the far side of the same big bed. He, snobbed, he snored louder than Eudora. Together, they made a snoring symphony. A symphony true, thought House. As he fell asleep, it came to him that maybe things happened. Maybe people came into your life and went out again in their own way, in their own time, in concert with everything else. Maybe his mother would tell him about Mr. Norwood Boyd if he could find her again in his dreams. The night became day once again. It would be another hot one. It would be hotter than House ever could have imagined. All right, that's the end of chapter 17. But I'm going to read this next part. This next part is a little news, a little news flash, um, a radio news flash. Sometimes in the story we have little news articles, and this time it's a radio news flash. So I'm going to go ahead and read it. WBAC in beautiful Aurora County, your station for local news and weather. Radio news flash, composed and read by Phoebe Scoop Tolbert, June 18th, 6 a.m. The Sunshine Laundry in Hallelujah has become the community gathering place for in our fair county. The enormous plate glass windows in front invite customers in to sit at the red checkered tables and watch each life daily turn on the big television set mounted on the wall while they wait for their sheets and shirts to be ironed by Lurleen Wallace, who has almost mastered the pressing machine. I took my microphone to the street yesterday and became your on-the-scene reporter in the front room of the Sunshine Laundry at lunchtime. Here is just some of what I recorded. Mary Wilson. I hope to be the official laundry of the Aurora County birthday pageant. Woodrow Pete Wilson. I protest this pageant. What about the ball game? My boy Klebo needs to play in his game. Mary Wilson. Shush, Pete. We've discussed this. His Hollywood career is more important. Every mama present. That's right. This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Betty Ramsey. Shh. The commercial's over. There he is, Dr. Dan, coming to our town soon. Pip shots. Can't be soon enough. That boy hasn't been home in over five years. Are my shaving towels ready, Mary? Evelyn Lavender. Are you starching everything, Mary? Maddie Perkins. Phoebe, will you turn that thing off? Oops, strike that last one. As you can see, excitement is building for the Aurora County birthday pageant in spite of some dissension in the ranks, which is always the case when one is creating art. This reporter can't wait to find out how the matter is resolved and my grandsons still will not eat their vegetables and soon we are going to have to break out the castor oil Please let us resolve this issue. We need to address my grandson's digestion, if nothing else. All right, fourth grade, that's the end of the radio news flash. What I really love about the news flashes that are in this book, the new, whether it's the newspaper or the radio, I really love that it just shows what a small town these people live in, right? If the radio news flash is a conversation overheard at a laundromat <laughs> and this woman who's the reporter is talking about her grandson not eating vegetables it just shows you how small um, the world is for the folks who live in Aurora County so it kind of gives you this sense that this place the setting in the story is probably pretty rural there's probably not a lot of people that live there there's probably a lot of open space um, and the focus of all the newspapers is always on 
individuals and conversations that are had. So it just kind of gives you this sense that it's a pretty tight-knit community where people know each other pretty well. It's hard to imagine a newsflash being published in like a Boulder or Denver news publication that's quite like that. So I just think it's very, it's very informative about the setting. Okay, end of chapter 17, end of a newsflash. We will see you tomorrow for chapter 18.